We're going to hear more now on the commitment to sustainability from the telecom sector. Steve Martineau is the COP26 high-level champion sector head for ICT and mobile, and he spent most of his career in the telecom sector. Please welcome Steve. Well, thank you very much, Sasha, um, and thank you all for your, your attention. Um, it's actually hard to get people's attention when you talk about mobile and ICT in climate change circles. I'm convinced it deserves a lot more of our attention, and today I want to tell you, tell you why. If you take a look at the mobile phone industry, for example, uh, despite contributing almost 5% of global GDP, it's an industry that generates much less than 1% of, of global emissions. So while mobile is a small part of the problem, it'll be a big part of the solution for living in a warmer world and a post-COVID recovery. And a resilient decarbonized future will indeed be a, a digital future. The evidence of the last nine months shows just how important ICT connectivity and solutions are. And if, you, if you're thinking maybe the massive changes in behavior uh, with more people than ever staying at home, uh, that must have meant that ICT networks had spikes in energy consumption or, or emissions. Well, network operators, BT, Telefonica, and, and Telia across Europe, for example, and the UK, certainly did see big shifts in usage, as you'd expect, but they didn't see big increases in their electricity bills. And if you take a, a, a longer term uh, look, um, the International Energy Agency reported that while internet traffic had grown by over 10 times uh, in, since, since uh, 2010 to 2019, the energy required to run data centers had increased by only, only 3%. And similarly, research by Ericsson on global electricity usage and operating emissions shows a similar picture for, for networks. Huge increases in capacity with little or no increase in, in emissions. Now, with the evolution of networks, things like 5G will bring new challenges for power consumption and efficiency, but the industry will tackle them because, because it has to. As new technologies are introduced, more capacity is delivered, but it has to be accompanied by major efficiency gains. Otherwise, the economics just don't stack up anymore. Electricity for telcos is estimated to comprise one of their biggest operating cost items. So efficiency gains are critical. Here in the UK, BT reports that its transition to next generation networks will reduce power requirements for transmission of data by a factor of something like 20 times for each gigabit carried. So getting 20 times more efficiency on, on these next generation networks. The ICT sector has set out a clear way forward to achieve emissions reductions in line with the Paris Agreement and a 1.5 degree warming scenario. The sector now knows what good looks like. It has a set of recommendations in place with the UN's International Telecommunications Union, and this helps companies in the sector to set science-based emissions reduction targets. I've got to give congratulations here to these, these organizations, JESSE, GSMA, and the ITU on this groundbreaking work with the science-based targets initiatives, not without a little bit of help from the Carbon Trust, so many thanks for that. More and more companies in the ICT and telecom sector are setting net zero emissions in line with this pathway, which requires a reduction of about half of their operational emissions in the next 10 years. In the mobile industry, companies representing over 20% of global revenues to date have signed up, with many more in the pipeline. And this really should get our attention, shouldn't it? But ambition is one thing. What's, what's the plan to get there? I already pointed out that efficiency improvements are key. The other big change the industry is making is a switch to renewable electricity wherever it can. In some markets, this is much easier than in others. In some areas, network operations uh, are hard even to get onto an electricity grid, which means the use of diesel generators for power, for example. But changes are being made and solutions are being found. Half of the newly purchased electricity, uh, new, renewable electricity uh, capacity in 2019, reported by the US-based Renewable Energy Buyers Alliance, some five gigawatts, was driven by just five tech and telecoms companies. So they're really driving additionality, driving new capacity coming onto the market. 
And research by Ericsson suggests that some 80% of decarbonization targets in the sector can be met by switching to renewables in direct operations and in the supply chain. And the supply chain decarbonization is more difficult, but it can be done. Uh, Apple has shown how it is decarbonizing its value chain by partnering with suppliers to build new renewables capacity across over 40 countries, including China. A bigger challenge is in ICT devices. At least half of ICT emissions are embedded in devices used by enterprises or, or, customer, or consumers. To make a computer or a phone involves countless components from a complex supply chain. Because of the rapid rate of change of the industry, device life cycles have been short. To fix this and reduce the full life cycle emissions of devices, they're gonna to need to last longer and be reused more. Recycling must become the norm. Verizon in the US recycled 20,000 tons of e-waste in 2019. And Orange in Europe is committed to recovering at least 30% of the phones it sells by 2025. It's great to see that refurbished phones are now being sold alongside newer models on operators' websites. Now, maybe that's still not that exciting, and it's still difficult to get people's attention. Maybe it looks pretty straightforward to decarbonize the ICT sector compared to things like steel, cement, shipping, or, or aviation. Or maybe it's because people in the sector want to move quickly on to what sounds like a sales pitch for decarbonizing other sectors. Mobile and ICT are the backbone of the new economy. Future economic growth simply isn't possible without them. To take a developing country perspective for a moment, we can see even more clearly in low-income markets that a thriving mobile sector improves overall economic performance and has a democratizing power that lifts people out of poverty and improves livelihoods across society. Even in the developing world, it's interesting, isn't it, that um, the UK's Office of National Statistics is revising its treatment of products and services in the telecom sector. The sector has delivered so much more product for a similar price, but it's actually messing with national inflation and growth calculations. It is an extraordinary productivity gain. So if we take a global view, it's clear that a decarbonizing ICT sector is critical to the achievement of the Paris Agreement. Not just for the sector itself to reduce its own emissions to zero as soon as possible, but also to leverage its power to support clean growth for the whole economy. The sales pitch to decarbonize other sectors is real. Provided that the mobile and ICT sectors continue to show ambition and progress towards decarbonization, they have a unique role to play. There is now a wide range of references that describe how mobile and ICT enable wider decarbonization. You'll hear shortly, I think, from uh, O2's CEO, Mark Evans, on their work in this area. Each analysis has its own methodology and approach, and the calculated size of the gain varies, but the result in each case makes it clear that the sector has the power to support other sectors making emissions reductions that are a multiple of the ICT sector's own emissions. Alongside the work shown here, I'd like to mention the great work done by Exponential Roadmap, which majors on the key role of mobile and digital in helping the whole economy to decarbonize by as much as 15%. And I'll also mention Carbon Trust's own excellent work with the GSMA last year, which concluded that emissions reductions benefits are already being realized of approximately 10 times the mobile industry's own emissions. And there are two main types of emissions benefit. One comes from the fact that mobiles have changed the way we as individuals do things, and the other is from the role of mobile in enterprise efficiency gains. Today, our mobiles are our travel tickets and our keys. Today, they allow us to share products like uh, cars, bikes, and even homes. And they allow us to reduce food waste by buying what's locally surplus at the end of the day. I haven't bought an alarm clock a torch, or a camera for years. We can hold medical consultations by video call, and we can work remotely better than ever. Earlier this year, Vodafone Business reported that they had enabled millions of people to work from home for the first time 
since the COVID crisis began. Today, the built environment gains from home automation so we can control our heating, cooling and lighting remotely with our mobiles. And as utilities roll out mobile connected smart meters, they will support real time innovation for domestic electricity generation and storage. As we heard earlier, the energy sector is already switching away from fossil fuels and OECD countries now have almost a third of their electricity being supplied from renewable sources, according to the International Energy Agency. Future grids will contain millions of electricity supply and storage points that need to be dynamically balanced in real time. And ICT will play a unique role here. And it was great to hear from Envision about how they see the role of AI in that too. Transport emissions are being reduced by the switch away from commuting towards telecommuting. Further gains are made from real-time data on traffic movements, improving journey planning and mapping. In fact, almost every sector of the economy is operating more efficiently as a result of real-time information delivered over mobile from, moment, from movement of products through supply chains to remote control and fault finding in high performance operations. Trends like these globally are estimated to reduce emissions the equivalent of 2 billion tons of CO2, roughly the same as the country the size of Russia's own emissions. But thought of another way. Let's think of it another way. These are all forms of value creation for the global economy that can be delivered with little or no additional emissions. And as the ICT sector itself decarbonizes, we can grow services like these while on a path of declining emissions. The contribution of mobile isn't just restricted to decarbonization either. We're already in a warmer world and extreme weather events have already increased. Operators know that their services are more critical than ever. So they're also strengthening their networks to deal with more storms, wildfires and flooding risks. In the US, AT&T, for example, has developed its own climate analysis climate change analysis tool to project climate impacts up to 30 years ahead to improve its own and its community's preparedness. And when the worst does happen, of course, mobile networks are there to help connect emergency workers and the rebuilding efforts. Innovation must be encouraged to decarbonize other sectors and BT has developed a green tech innovation platform working with its partner Plug and Play, focusing on smart, treat, smart streets, smart buildings and remote working. So the pitch from mobile and ICT sectors to enable decarbonization and build climate resilience is sincere. The sectors have real business opportunities in decarbonization and climate resilience. And for me, that only adds credibility to the claims. This kind of commercial incentive makes it all the more likely to be done. And for the pitch to decarbonize other sectors to ring true, the mobile and ICT sectors must continue to show their leadership in setting ambitious net zero goals and demonstrating progress. And it is happening. It's why so many are now proudly joining the Race to Zero. Race to Zero is a global campaign to bring together all of us, businesses, cities, regions and investors, for a healthy, resilient, zero carbon recovery. Its aims are to prevent future threats, create decent jobs, and unlock, and, and unlock inclusive, sustainable growth. All Race to Zero members are committed to the same overarching goal, achieving net zero emissions by 2050 at the very latest. Let me see if I can make this work and show you a short video.
And I should just say UN Global Compact is the place to go to um, to get behind this race to zero with their 1.5 uh, business ambition. Um, so do we do hope you will join us in this race to a better world. We all want to win this race together. So let's all get involved. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. very much Steve that was a great presentation um, a couple of questions for you actually the first one that's come in is um, can you summarize the critical areas that the ICT industry needs to focus on in their challenge to decarbonize yeah I think I think for, for decarbonization it's very very clear that it's it's, it's one sector which can decarbonize uh, perhaps quicker than some others really by getting directly into renewable energy. So, so get that renewable energy supply into the operations wherever they can. That's the number one thing that the sector, the sector needs to do. And, and my question to you was, um, what would you say is the one main factor that would impact the rate of decarbonization in ICT and mobile the most over the next 10 years? I think, um, I think probably that those supply chain challenges are probably the biggest um, uh, issues to address. Um, there, that supply chain, as I mentioned, is, is very, it's very complex. Um, a lot of components go into all of the equipment that runs uh, the, the ICT in, industry. Um, and they, they're, they're often coming from parts of the world where it's harder to get access to renewable energy supply. But it's still the same answer that I gave to your previous question, really, is getting that renewable energy coming in. I think the example that uh, Apple has shown and some other leaders in ICT sector of partnering with suppliers in those parts of the world actually building their own renewable energy supplies in those countries to, to, to really decarbonize that, that part of the, the supply chain. So I think supply chain is, is one of the biggest. I think if I could just add one, one other uh, particular challenge, which is perhaps further downstream, but developing a circular economy solution for ICT equipment mm -hmm is another big challenge that the that this, the sector's got to figure out how to do that. They're very complex pieces of equipment. And the idea that we can just put them into a recycling machine, um, unfortunately, just isn't isn't real right now. So I've got to think about how do we get the, the pieces of that, that stuff back into use in, in a circular way rather than ending up in, in an e-waste e pile somewhere. And you, t you touched on that in your presentation as well about kind of uh, refurbished phones alongside, you know, new phones. How do you convince consumers that that's the way to go when everyone's always about the newest, the latest, the flashiest? It's quite <laughs> difficult. That, it is a great and it's a great question because I think very often it, and, and I don't know, I don't know whether Mark, Mark would maybe put that question to Mark when he comes up after me. But I think, I think it, is, it is a paradox, isn't it? Because I think we do know that consumers are excited. I mean, I, so Apple's announcement of their new lineup yesterday, mm. amazing, very, very exciting. But you're also thinking about how will they work? But I mean, if you take Apple, they, 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 are, they, are, they're, they are at least reporting that those, those pieces of equipment are lasting longer, which is, which is uh, a real positive. And certainly when I finished with my phone, I'm finding someone else who, who, who can use it. So I, I don't think there's a simple answer to that. And I'm going to dodge that one. So ask Mark. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> enough. Over to Mark for that one. Yeah. Then. All right. Well, Steve, a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you.